Hi, this is Mr. Max with Sun Kofa Mathematics. So I am doing geometry today. So it's a few questions. You can pause the video and then you can attempt to answer the questions that follow. So here we have um, a diagram and these two lines here, the arrows indicate that these two lines are parallel. And I hope you still remember certain properties that you get that are formed by parallel lines as well as a transversal that cuts through them. So first, you can identify this particular angle here. It's going to be 125 degrees because 55 plus that 125 should give you that straight angle right there. So corresponding angles, they are equal in parallel lines. If you don't know what they are, so let me take the same diagram. And I switched it around and uh, you can remember them by this F that you can create between parallel uh, lines so it's either you're reflecting or something like this so you can see the F right there so what it means is this P should also be equal to 125 because corresponding angles are equal right so you have a whole question here you have got a diagram here and then uh, you have got a B C and D these are points that are on the circumference of a circle the center is O then EF is a tangent at the circle at A, and GH is just a straight line that runs through point A. And then you have angle CBD, which is 34 degrees, and then you have angle OAG, which is this angle here, created by that straight line, and this radius here, which is 78 degrees. Write down the mathematical names of line BC. So when you look at BC, that is a chord, Okay, a chord is a line that touches the circle at two ends of the circumference. A diameter is also a chord. It is special because it passes through the center. So BC is a chord. OA is a radius. Then you are now asked to find angle X. So what is important is that you should realize that that little angle there plus this 78 should create 90 degrees. And the reason for that is because the tangent EF and the radius are perpendicular to each other. Then they want you to find y. So this is an angle or a triangle in a semicircle. And I hope you remember that any point C that is in a semicircle will be 90 degrees. Therefore, you can use angle sum of a triangle to find the value of y. And the value of y is nothing but 66 degrees. And your reasons, you write them next to your answers to justify the reasons that you give. The, the question continues, now we have a regular polygon. Regular here in this case means uh, all the sides are equal, okay? All the angles are equal, center O, so the center is somewhere there. And then the name of this polygon, well, it has eight sides, so therefore a regular eight-sided polygon is called a regular octagon. Now we're supposed to find the value of W here. So what I did is I drew the same diagram and I made triangles by drawing from one vertex. You realize that I have six triangles. And if you know that the interior angles of one triangle is 180, so all these six triangles, their angles will add up to 1080. So therefore, if you want to find one angle, each interior angle, you will simply divide by the number of sides or the number of angles. So that is 135 degrees there. But that is the sum of the interior angle of an octagon. But we are not looking for that. We are also not looking for the sum of the interior angles, which is 1080. We are looking for what W would be. Since that line comes from the center, it will cut this 135 into 2, meaning that W will be 67.5 degrees. As far as the exterior angle of a polygon is considered, so let's suppose this is the part of this polygon. An exterior angle is one that's in the outside. And what you need to understand is that exterior angles of any polygon, as you are going around the polygon, around the polygon, will always add up to 360 degrees. So if you are given one to be 24, you simply divide that 360 by the 24. And we are now talking here about a 15-sided polygon. Right, you have got two similar figures. It's very important you are told that these figures are similar. The areas of the figures are 5 square centimeters and 7.2 square centimeters, respectively. The length of the basis of one is x 
and the other one is 6.9. So we are supposed to calculate the value of x. So when you are dealing with similar figures, the ratio, the fraction of the corresponding sides, if it's x and y, like for example, you have got x and 6.9, it will then equal to the ratio of the areas that you square them. So in simple terms, this is what I'm saying in short, that you take the area of the smaller one over the area of the bigger one, and you take the sides then, and you square it, it should give you something like this. So the area of the small one over the area of the big one should equal to the square of the sides. So from here, it becomes a simple mathematical problem. In order for you to get rid of that square, you take the root of 5 divided by 7.2. And that answer you then multiply by 6.9 in order for you to find the value of x, which in this case, the distance there is 5.75 centimeters. Right, you have got uh, another diagram here. You have got A, B, C, and D. They are lying on the circle. A, B, A, C, and B, C. A, C, all the way, and B, C. They intersect A, C, and B, D. They intersect at X. Then give a reason why angle B, A, X, and angle C, D, X, will be equal. So first I need to introduce you to what we call a segment. So if I have a circle here and there is a chord here, this chord is dividing the circle into segments. This is going to be a major segment and this is going to be a minor segment. So the reason why I'm bringing that up is because we have, suppose we take this one here and we have chord BC. You see that this angle here and this angle here are in the same segment. And one of the rules that you should know is that angles that are in the same segment, they are being, or they, angles that are being subtended by this chord in the same segment, they will be equal. And that is the reason why those two angles are equal. You can also naturally agree if you draw another chord here at AD, then that angle at B and C will be equal, creating similar triangles as you will see in a bit. Right, so part B, you're told that AB is 4.4, as you can see from the diagram. CD is 9.4 centimeters. BX is 3.84 centimeters. You're supposed to calculate the value of CX. Now, I'm going to use a different method. So when triangles are similar, and I, I talked about this angle B will be equal to angle C, and if you can prove that two angles of a triangle are equal, then the third angles will be equal, and the two shapes will be similar. So their corresponding angles are equal and the ratio of their corresponding sides are also equal. So that means that if I take the 4.4 over the 9.4 and I let it equal to the 3.8 over the CX that I'm looking for, and you then simply just do your mathematics, like say you cross multiply, and then you solve that, you should get that CX is equal to 8.20 centimeters. But we're going to also show you on another way how you can actually draw these two triangles if they are similar. Right, so let me bring back that same shape. And uh, we are told here we need to find the area of triangle DCX, which is the bigger one here. We are given the area of the smaller one. But first, let me take these two triangles and I put them on top of each other. Remember what I said, angle A is equal to angle D. That means that little angle here will equal to this angle here because they're corresponding. So similar angle B is equal to angle C. So it, then they share the same angle there, X. So these two triangles are therefore similar. Right, so what we calculated in our previous example was the whole distance CX. But now we are dealing with the areas again. And since these two shapes are similar, we're going to use our fact that we know that the area over uh, the area of the small one over the area of the big one should equal to the one side of the small one over the side of the big one squared. So this is where we start. So we're looking for the area of the big triangle DCX. So we cross multiply and we need to find angle triangle, the area of triangle DCX, which is about 24.7 square centimeters correct to three significant figures. Right, question five here, you can pause the video for this one, and then you can attempt to find angle A, angle B, angle C. You're also told that AB and CD are parallel lines, and PQR, PQR is a straight line, and it intersects these 
uh, at all. So PQR and ML, MNL. So you have what PQR, you have MNL. They are intersecting here at O. Then angle A, Q, P. This little one here is 32 degrees. Angle M, N, B is 78 degrees. You're supposed to calculate the values of A, B, and C. Have a go. Right, so I hope you had. So let me just bring in what I have. I know that this is going to be 78 degrees. The reason for that is corresponding angles or vertically opposite angles rather are equal. Same applies here. This is going to be 32. So what you're realizing is I can actually calculate angle A as it's a triangle that is formed in there. And the angles of a triangle add up to 180. So taking the sum of 72 and 38 and subtracting them from 180 gives me that angle which is 70 degrees. Another thing is, we can find angle B here. So Z is 32, the whole one here should be 180. So angle B is 148 degrees. You can find angle C if you can look at this 32, or you can say that, wait a minute, this is also 148 because they're corresponding. So that little one here should naturally be 32 degrees. Whatever method you have been using, you should find that A is 70 degrees, B is 148 degrees, and C is nothing but 32 degrees. So you can have different ways and different methods, but you need to work on the diagram. You take your pencil and then you work out the missing information and the missing angles, and you apply all the rules and all the properties that you know of in order for you to find the missing angles that you are supposed to find.